I made a video a while ago about creating a parser in Rust. So that was all done by hand. We ran through the content of the file we were parsing just using character and buff reader tools. This time I want to have a look at using NOM instead, which is a library for building parsers in Rust. I'm going to recap what we built already by building everything by hand. Then I want to have a look at what NOM is, how it works, and then what a parser will look like using NOM instead of building everything by hand. So as a quick recap then, the file we were parsing looked like this, and we're pretending this is a log for a key value database of some kind. And by parsing the log and doing something with the values in here, we can reconstruct the state of our database. So when we see a key equals a value, that will be treated as an insert into a hash map, which is how we're going to represent our data state. If we see the same key more than once, it should overwrite. So the value of vegetable should end up being potato at the end of this file being parsed and processed. And then when we see a colon, we're going to treat that as a control character or a control key. So this one is saying delete, and it's looking for a key as an argument to that delete control command. And that is then going to remove fruit from our state or delete it from our hash map. So let's have a look through the parser code really quickly. So we are loading up that file we we're just looking at, splitting it into lines. We then run through those lines one by one and try to parse each line. If the line starts with a colon character, we try and parse a control sequence. Otherwise, we just try and parse a key value out and skip empty lines. If we're parsing a control sequence, we need to parse until we find a space because that's the separator between the name of the command and the values that it's going to accept. We're only supporting the delete command for now. So if we see a delete, we know we need to parse a key next. So we go ahead and parse a key. And if we find a key successfully, then we're going to go ahead and immediately update our state by removing that key from it. And then we proceed very similarly. So when we parse a key value, we're looking for text that names the key, separating on an equals character, and then trying to parse the value for that. And again, we're looking for text. If we get to the end of a line, we must be complete reading our value in, and we insert that value into the storage. So that is how it looks in hand-coded form. Let's now have a look at NOM and see what that can do for us. I find this is the most helpful page for understanding what NOM does, and also as a reference when you're trying to use it to see what it can do for you. So looking at this usage column down the middle here will give you a bit of an idea of what's going on. So NOM gives you lots of functions. You call those functions to tell it how to recognize the thing you're trying to parse and it will give you back text when it matches those things. So for example, when we were matching keys in our key values, we could say take while is alphabetic, exactly like the documentation is telling us, and that will continue grabbing characters while it sees something alphabetic. As soon as it runs into an equal sign that isn't A, B, C, D, E, whatever, it will then say, okay, that's the end of that segment. So I'll give you that back as text and then these two values it's giving back here, it's giving back what's left still to be parsed as the first result or first part of the result tuple that it gives you. And the second part is the thing that it recognized. So if we tried to recognize a key value, we should be able to create some functions that sit together that say, read me out a string of, numer uh, string of alphabetic characters, an equal sign, and then a string of alphabetic characters again, which will give us our value for our key value. And that way they can then take back as two strings and we can ignore the equal sign and we can do exactly what we did before which is put them in a hash map but we didn't have to write nearly as much code we didn't have to worry about termination conditions do we have a bad end of a line all of that's taken care of for, for us we can just describe what our parser should look like so there's loads of these things and um, we can recognize individual characters we can recognize things from a set we can recognize tags which is just a fixed piece of text and then there's some cool other things we can do. So we can do things like separated pairs. So we can say, give me these two things only if they're separated by a comma, for example. We can do tuples to recognize a sequence of things. It's probably the easiest way to recognize a, a sequence. So this is the kind of thing we might want to use to recognize key equals value. So we do our parser for our key. 
then a parser for equals, and then a parser for our value, something like that. And you can also do some other clever stuff, um, like folding, which you could do to say, take a list. So you could parse a list with a fold many, and actually build that list as you parse. So you might say, parse me a number separated by commas, and then wrap that in a fold, and that will let you provide a function so that as you receive each item in the list, you can add it into a list in the programming language you're working in in Rust. So that is how NOM works, and it's probably going to make more sense once we, once we jump into it. There is one more thing that's a real pitfall with NOM that I do want to show you before we jump back to the code. Unfortunately, this is really only documented in the code and in some examples. There isn't really clear documentation for this. So we're going to have a look at the source code just at a fairly high level. So inside the NOM source code, we've got two folders that we care about, two modules. There's a character module and a bytes module. So if we look at the bytes module first, you'll see it has a complete and a streaming version. If we just go into one of these, into the complete one, you'll see we can recognize tags, we can recognize tags without case, is not a, so all the things we just saw in that reference documentation for all the combination functions that are supported. Now the trouble with this when you're working with NOM is making sure you import these functions from the right place. So complete means you have your whole input and NOM should be able to proceed to the end of the input and parse it all in one go. So say you're parsing a file on disk, that's a good example of that. Streaming is more advanced. It can deal with receiving partial information that's coming in in chunks. So maybe you're reading off the network, like maybe you're reading an HTTP request or something like that. And it's possible that you don't have the whole message that you're receiving yet. You can then parse it in chunks and NOM will know not to call it a failed parse. If it runs out of input, it'll just say, I need some more input. So those two are for different things. We're going to be using complete. And then you also need to be careful not to mix up bytes and character. So you can use them in the same parser, but you've then got to be very careful with the output types that NOM gives you. So it'll give you back bytes rather than characters if you mix the imports. And if you're trying to write your own functions that wrap up a series of NOM combinator functions so that you can reuse them, you can end up creating difficulties for yourself if you're not careful with your types. So for what we're doing, we should mostly be using character and complete as our import to get functions. So just something to be aware of. If you import things that don't match, you're going to get very confusing errors from the compiler. Let's jump into some code. Onto the best part now, because we get to put this stuff together and see it in action. So I'm going to work through this bottom up rather than top down. And I'm not going to live code this because it's complicated enough to put together. It's quite syntax heavy especially with the error handling. So I'm not going to run through those details. I'm just going to focus on the important parts of NOM and try and walk through how you turn the pieces that it gives you into a parser. So starting from the bottom then, in order to recognize a delete command, we are recognizing a tag, which is just this exact text. So it should match colon delete, at least one space, and then some alphabetic characters. We ask it to parse those, and that will give us back three strings. So the strings will be the delete command, the spaces, and the key to be deleted. And then you see just above, this is where this function is used. So we're then using another non-primitive, which is map. So that takes whatever came out of a parser and runs it through a function so that we can transform the value. So we're saying run that parser and then give us back a tuple, which is those three strings. Throw away the first two. We don't care about the delete tag or the spaces. Just give us the key. And then we're turning that into an enum constant. So we're saying we want to do a delete of this key. And we're storing that up for later. I'm going to come back and explain why when I explain how this thing runs. And hopefully that'll make some more sense. But for now, we've just built some data saying we saw this delete for this key. So then coming up a little bit again, we can see how a key value is dealt with. So a key is just alpha, and then we're allowing here a value to be alphanumeric, which I think is slightly different to the parser we built previously. Um, but it doesn't make a big difference what we store in our hash map values, they're just strings. And then coming up, we do the same thing again. We say parse my key values, 
give me back just the key and just the value, and then record that as something to be inserted later by storing the key and the value up for later. And then coming up again at the top level, we say use the nom alternate. This thing says, give me some options. I'll try each of them and try and find the one that works. So we say, first option is to go and try and find a delete command. Now that's going to go and run the function we saw first, which has this requirement to match a tag at the beginning, colon delete. It doesn't have to run through all of this though. It's smart enough to say, if I don't see a colon, there's no way I can match that string. So this is not the right option. So outside of an alternate command, that would probably just be an error, although there are a few other combinations that work like this. But in the ultimate, it's just going to say, the alternate, sorry, it's going to say, all right, well, that didn't match. Let's try the next one. Then it'll try and match a key value. And that's going to give it, hopefully, a successful match. And then we'll get back whichever one matched. And that's part of the reason why we mapped them into a, into a single type by using an enum. So we've got this hash map action, which can either be an insert of a key and a value, or it could be a delete. So helpful for Rust typing to be able to map that into a single type. So we are running through all of the content. We are running a parser over effectively each line. So we're expecting each line to either match a delete command or a key value assignment. And then we're storing those into a list of actions to reassemble later. And then right at the end, we are assembling those actions into our final result by running through each of them and acting on them by doing the same thing we did in the previous parser, which is inserting for an insert and removing for a delete. And that will build our final state. So the end result is almost identical to what we had before, but how we got there is quite different. And hopefully it now makes a little bit of sense why I didn't go ahead and update the state inline as we're calling these functions. Because nom can go and call something, run partway through it, realize it's not the right thing to be parsing and come back up, we could be very careful and say, well, I know that after this point, it's definitely parsed that it's matched and it's not going to match something else. It's safe to do a delete or safe to do an insert. We could do that. But because we have got this like moving up and down of a tree trying to find the right option, it feels a little bit safer just to separate the parsing and the data construction from each other. So just say, only give me back the things that you successfully parsed and I will interpret what to do with those. So let's quickly see this run. And then I'm also going to break it slightly so we can see what these context functions do. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. And it does the same thing the previous one did, as we expected. It should be identical up to this point. Let's try and break it and see what those context tags were doing. So if I break a key value assignment, let's say we put something we're not allowed to have in the value, like double slash. We are only allowing letters and numbers. So we run that. It tells us, OK, I didn't parse. It's telling us that that character was the problem. And it's not being super helpful. It's telling us it was expecting a control line feed. So it's matched all of the letters that it can. After the letters have been matched, it's expecting a new line. So it's pretty close. It's, it's telling us the thing that was broken in about the right place. That's pretty good. And um, what about if we break something else? So if we break, let's say, break this by saying put in a marker we're not allowed, that's probably going to do the same thing. So what about if we just try and parse a delete that just doesn't have a key. So what will that do? Okay, so it's found the thing that didn't parse, but it's not been super helpful. So it's gone off down the alt path. So yeah, here we'll see. It's gone off and tried, okay, well, it didn't match colon delete space key. So we must it must be a key value assignment. So it's gone down and said, okay, we're trying to match a key value that didn't match. While we were trying to match a key, we couldn't match a key because it doesn't start with alpha. So you have to think a bit about what it's telling you. If you wanted like a really good output that tells you exactly what the parsing problem was, you'd have to collapse this down a bit. I'm just using a default built-in thing in NOM that says, uh, let me find it. Just up here, convert error. So it's coming in from the NOM library and it's just a really quick way to convert a NOM error into something that could be printed on the terminal. So it's pretty good. Not perfect, but then 
writing a parser that gives you back perfect errors is pretty hard. So a little bit of a trade-off, we'd get a little bit more control. We could go in and maybe put a custom piece of code in here in our custom handwritten parser. But equally, NOM is taking a lot of care of a lot of things for us. It will handle a much wider range of things without errors than we would be able to do if we we're writing this by hand, unless we want to spend a really long time verifying that we can cope with unusual inputs writing this by hand. So another tool in the toolbox, NOM is a super useful piece of code. It can let you parse all kinds of things, streaming data, binary data, and different text formats. Definitely give it a go and see how you get on with it.